You know that saying, don't negotiate with terrorists? Well, that is a law that has been repeatedly violated by one party. So before you tell us the choice is so obvious, vote blue no matter who, let's walk through the timeline of how blue has empowered Islamists, jihadists and terrorists in the Middle East. 1979, set Iran aside for a second, it's the same year that President Jimmy Carter of the Democratic Party initiated Operation Cyclone, which gave hundreds of millions of dollars to the Mujahideen fighters in Afghanistan, which eventually became the Taliban. Now, at that time, Afghanistan was fighting the Soviets, but Carter could have backed grassroots Afghan fighters that were not Islamists. So the question is, why did he make that decision? 1979 just so happens to be the same year that the Islamic regime came to power in Iran. And who backed them to come to power? Yes, once again, Jimmy Carter. In declassified documents from 2016, it was revealed that there were exchanges between the first supreme leader, Ayatollah Khomeini, and President Carter. Khomeini was asking Carter to help bring him to power, and Carter was promising to hold back the Iranian army so that there wouldn't be a coup, and then helped disseminate anti-Shah propaganda that fomented the revolution that brought the Islamic regime to Iran. But why? Let's go back in time just a year or two before. 1977, Jimmy Carter was hosted by the Shah of Iran in the Neovaron complex in Tehran, where he is famously quoted as referring to Iran as the island of stability. Now, in the 70s, what was going on in the US? Due to inflation, wars, political upheaval, the US was losing prominence on the world stage, while Iran was climbing and prospering on the world stage. Jimmy Carter funds the Islamists in Afghanistan and turns Afghanistan black. Jimmy Carter brings to power the Islamists in Iran and turns Iran black. The US has no meaningful competitors in the Middle East, which is an extremely resource-rich, resource-intensive land, so long as it continues to fund and support jihadists and Islamists that keep the Middle East suppressed. And then people say, well, Jimmy Carter was just the worst president of all time. He's not reflective of the Democratic Party's foreign policies. Incorrect. In 2009, when Obama had just come to power, there was a revolution in Iran called the Green Movement, and it looked just like the Woman Life Freedom Movement. And then they were very, very close to toppling the regime. Then what happened? The Obama administration, with the support of its advisors in the White House, a group that a US court had just determined to have ties to the Islamic regime in Iran, made the decision to enter the JCPOA and unleashed to the regime $150 billion. The Iranian people on the streets in the thick of their revolution chanted Obama, Obama, Yaba U, Yabama, meaning Obama, Obama, either you're with them, the regime, or you're with us. Obama was with the regime. And he knows well that the reason that the regime exists today is because of that decision. And he later came out and apologized and said that he should have sided with the Iranian people. In retrospect, I think that was a mistake. Every time we see a flash of people longing for freedom, I think we have to express some solidarity about it. During Trump's tenure, he exits the JCPOA and puts maximum sanctions on the regime. When Biden subsequently comes to power, again, during another Iranian uprising, the Woman Life Freedom Movement, what does he do? He laxes on enforcing sanctions. As a result, the regime has the highest oil exports in the past six years. Let's not forget that just one year before October 7th, the Biden administration negotiated a $7 billion ransom deal with the Islamic regime for prisoners it had wrongfully detained in Iran. Well, we warned them that that money would not be used for humanitarian purposes. We warned them that money was fungible. We warned them it would be used towards domestic and regional terrorism. We warned them that hostage diplomacy encourages more hostage taking. And then what happened? October 7th happened and they had to refreeze that $7 billion. Now you're thinking, well, maybe Kamala Harris will be different. Kamala Harris's running mate, Tim Waltz, supported the JCPOA and is in support of diplomatic relations with the regime but it gets worse. There is currently a request to have her national security advisor, Philip Gordon, investigated for his potential ties to the regime. This is because of his association with Iranian Americans in our government in the United States who have provable historic ties to the Islamic regime. Not just that, but he actually personally worked on Obama's JCPOA deal with the Islamic regime. 
He actually wrote a book about the false promise of regime change in the Middle East, instead advocating for diplomacy with these terrorist jihadist regimes. Diplomacy meaning what? Meaning giving them money. You cannot create regime change in the Middle East that brings in Islamists and then abandon it as a failed policy. You broke it, so now you're responsible for helping fix it. So let's run this back. The Democratic Party brings the Taliban to Afghanistan. The Democratic Party brings the Islamic regime to Iran. The Islamic regime then creates and stations its proxies all across the Middle East, from the Houthis to Hamas to Hezbollah to its proxies in Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan, Pakistan. And then after creating all of that, the Democratic Party continues to fund and empower that. You cannot blindly tell people, vote blue no matter who. You need to ask the questions about the who, and if that's your party, and you want people to vote for your party, you need to clean it up. Because let me be clear, the Middle East will not withstand another four years, much less another eight years, of appeasement to terrorist regimes.